Welcome, welcome, welcome. It's Vach Lombardi. We're back. Uh, we're going to take a look at two running backs today, not three. Um, we're going to watch some film, of course, to open this thing up with. But, of course, we're going to do the uh, the bonus footage at the end of the show where we just kind of sit around and have a conversation about these two running backs, not three. Um, we're going to talk about why I didn't talk about three running backs today. And we're going to talk about these guys and how I think they make the team or their path to making the team. All right. Should be a fun one. And, you know, of course, the pros and cons that come with film watching or whatever. So. Like the video, subscribe, all that good stuff, and tell me what you think of these guys while we're running this for the cardio. But first up, we got Rico Dowdle, um, former uh, South Carolina running back. I am a big fan of brother Rico Dowdle. And I know somebody's going to ask, well, Vachi is an undrafted free agent. You're, you're, you're getting ready to say all these good things about Rico Dowdle. What's so bad about him? Well, um, ankle injury, knee, and sports hernia. I don't know how bad that gets. Um, plus, he has some consistency issues. But when he was rolling, he was rolling. And you see flashes of greatness. And when we talk about these undrafted guys, you're looking for traits anyway. And, I mean, first and foremost, you just can't be violating people stiff arming their helmet off. Like, first of all, you you just that that's, that's just against the rules, right? Like, you can stiff arm somebody. That's in the rules. That's fair play. That's part of the game. But stiff arming my helmet off, my helmet off, my helmet all the way off is a violation. Rico Dowdle is he about 5'11", 6'15", or so, um, but he's really shifty, and he has great vision. And that's what I like about him, to where he's a shorter, big muscle dude, so he does run with power. He does finish runs and carrying Xavier McKinney here. He does do that, but he does run with a little bit of shiftiness, and I do like that about him. Let's talk about his vision right here. We're going to run this counter. And what I mean by counter is that um, two linemen from the backside are going to pull to the front side, right? So two guys from the left are going to pull right. So we're going to run this counter, and conventionally we would just follow these these big guys here, right? That just makes makes the most sense. That's where the the caravan is. Let me follow the blockers. But Rico saw a little bit of weakness in the middle of this thing. They just saw the movement that they got on this one tech here, and he just decided to cut it back and um go and just go directly up the middle. So. First of all, we know that there's vision with Rico Dowdle. Plus, we know that there's some willingness to go get dirty with some of those tough runs. Like I said, he's just carrying Xavier McKinney right here, finishing the runs on the back end. I really like that. Um, let's keep talking, man. What else we got? What else we got for Rico Dowdle, man? We talk about contact balance, man. You know, if you're running the ball in the National Football League to any capacity, whether you're a running back, whether you're a receiver, quick game guy, you need to run with some with some contact balance. You need these arm tackles don't need to work. You if somebody can bring you down with with one arm, you're way too fragile. You don't need to be running in the National Football League. So not only does Rico finish these runs, but he's running through these arm tackles, man. Just whatever you need to do to make the first guy not get you man just make the first guy not get you bro we take a look at this play we talk about contact balance <clears throat> or we're just talking about balance in general this ain't necessarily the contact variation of it but being able to stay up stay on your feet stay on your feet of course get what you can and get down that's a rule um but just kind of being just being aware of the situation right you're i mean he was kind of by himself right here and you know they wasn't really tackling rico like that because after a while if rico keeps finishing these runs you kind of don't want to tackle him anymore so if they're gonna half-ass tackle him and him just kind of stand on his feet just keeping that balance keeping that nimbleness that agility all that stuff's top tier man all oh, that stuff's top tier, man. Look at the feet that we putting on here. And th 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 that speaks to the to the to the balance. Not balance like not falling down, but the balance of traits from Rico Dowdle. Like one play, he's getting the ball up the middle, running through people. Right. And the next play we're getting this shiftiness from. He's also a, a pretty good pass catcher, but y'all going to have to look for his freshman tape when they was actually throwing it to him. I think uh, they got a, a 2016 game versus Missouri um, where he caught some passes there. But check out your boy, man. Check out the feet here. Check out the feet from Rico Dowdle. Ah, just cutting it all the way. Just getting around ah, on the sideline. Just barely missing people. Right. Barely missing people. Man, let this mess around and be Yak City, man. And 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 I, and I got a real life conversation about, uh, you know, the running back depth chart on this team this year. We'll talk about that a little bit. Rico Dowdle catching the ball. Look at the feet, though. Look at the feet from this dude that's just running everybody, or running people over in this play, right? Just the, you get this mixture of power and balance and quickness and pass catching and. Uh, 
this shiftiness. And I know people don't like when I rewind to play four, five, six times. But come on, son. What, what are we doing? <laughs> what else you want to look at? Take a look at this play. Look at how Rico Dowdle set these defenders up with his blockers and then cut to create his own space, right? When we when we talk about um like Cam Akers from Florida State, you know, like a like a running back on a on a bad team, how do we grade him, right? If you know something breaks down. Well, we break we we grade them on the ability to create their own space. So this play in this play in particular, Rico Dowdle created his own space. So we got another counter. They love to pull those offensive linemen in South Carolina. So we got another counter, right? So take a look at the defenders for the most part, right? Take a look at the defenders. If they're reading this counter, they're going to basically keep everything inside the hashes, right? Because that's where it looks like Rico's going. Rico's going off of this blocker here, right? That's what it looks like. So if they're crashing down to keep this inside the hash, Rico sets them up. Rico presses close to his offensive line to keep them kind of compressed to keep them to the inside right he's gonna boom 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 get inside just to bounce back outside there's no space outside because everybody went inside right everybody's trying to make that tackle within these hashes here but i'm gonna break outside the hashes after i set you up after my blocker was engaged after i'm just you know use my athleticism and then we got Shaywu Aloni Lua um, from uh, TCU. He was the backup running back in TCU, but the Cowboys are going to use him as a fullback, which is interesting. Um, now, he's clearly bigger than Rico. He's bigger than Rico. He's bigger than Darius Anderson, his TCU counterpart. Um, he like 230. So he's one big muscle for real. So when I found out that when I found out that the Cowboys are using him at fullback. That got a lot more interesting. We always talk about these undrafted free agents, which of these guys are going to make the team. I think Shea Wu got a chance. We're going to talk about that a little bit later, but let's just run through some of his plays real quick. What does he do? What's he do really well? There hasn't been a third and short that he hasn't converted. He's a third down gangster for real. Third and one, two, and three. Every time you're in those situations, if you give him the ball, he'll figure it out and make it work for you. Third and two right here, power running, boom. Um, now, what's different about him, I just called him a power runner. That's Jalen Rager in motion, by the way. I just called him a a power runner, you know, he runs like Bo Scarborough kind of sorta like he runs that way, but I think he's a little more shifty. I think he blocks better and I think he catches the ball so we can actually use him in more ways than we would use a guy like Bo Scarborough. But in terms of like the short distance running, absolutely. Indubitably. We're just talking about short yardages here. This is fourth and one here. Now, do I want him to cut all the way back? I don't because Shea Wu does think he's more athletic than he really is. You know what I mean? But once somebody get hands on like, Hey man, run up a gap and quit playing. Like, you know, he'll be fine. He'll be good to go. Um, a run on third and five. <laughs> he's just going to carry people. <laughs> I wouldn't run the ball on, on third and five, but if you're going to get a ball to Shea Wu and just let him drag folk, then just give it, you know, just give him the ball and let him, let him just drag folk, man. This is what he does. He's like I said, he's a lot less um, putting that big 230 pound body in the way. Um, I think if you translate that to what the Cowboys plan on doing with him, in which I don't have all the answers here, but just when they called him a fullback and then you watch his tape and look at his trace, it kind of just makes sense a little bit that they would use him. Um, they would use him in a lot of different ways, but we'll talk about it. Here we go again. Another short yard situation. I've never seen Rico get stuffed on third and one or fourth and one. You know, the offensive line may get stuffed, but that don't mean he gets stuffed, right? Take a look at, um, did I say Rico? Shea Wu, pardon me. Um, Shea Wu, look at his hands, right? Natural hands catcher, right? He didn't fight the ball. The ball didn't get all up in his body and bounce off his helmet and stuff like that. Natural catcher of the ball. Then he turns into a runner again, right? So third and one, can you stop him? <laughs> No, sir. <laughs> Third and two. Can you stop him? Absolutely not. <laughs> it's just it's just easy for him, man. It's just easy. Now, um, for those of you that only came for the film, I appreciate y'all for coming, man. Like the video, comment, subscribe, and all that good stuff. Tell me what you think about these two running backs. Um, for those of you that, that are going to hang around for the bonus conversation, appreciate y'all for hanging around. But let's talk about it. Um, so these undrafted free agents, right? I always talk about when it, when it comes to them making the team, it's not about how good they are for the most part. It's, it's about the path of least resistance and what can you do on this team overall? You know what I mean? There's a lot more than just 
um, than just being better than somebody or just beating somebody out. For example, excuse me, we're talking about Kendrick Rogers. Um, Vash, can he come in and be the six receiver? Uh, well, I don't, I don't think so. On top of him beating the guys in front of him, he's going to have to do something on special teams. I don't, I, you know, it's just what is the path of resistance and what is the list of things you can do on my team, right? So when it comes to, let's do Shea Wu first, right? Shea Wu, Aloni Lua, the fullback. The only competition he got on this team right now is Jameez Oluwatle. That's it. Nobody else. So if he comes into camp, he has to block, run, catch. And if he can do it better than Jameez Olawale, then he has a spot on this team. It's not like this long list of guys you got to go through. It's not like Rondell Carter. He's got to go through all these defensive ends and possibly find his way onto a practice squad situation. Like Shea Wu can start for you. He could be a starter on this team because you're not going to keep two two fullbacks. There's no reason to keep two fullbacks or whatever. So if we if we run in one of them and Shea Wu comes in better than, you know, better than Jameez if, you know, he just catches more pass, then then Shea Wu could be the starter here. He could absolutely be the starter here. And I tell you what, I was sick of Jameez Olawale last year, whether it be you know, the 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 drops or the uh the 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 coach is not trusting him and one time they you know he he ran his wheel route and he was wide open, he beat his linebacker and we Dak threw the ball to him. He wasn't he, he didn't even look back for the ball. He just got hit in the back of the head with the football. So of course I'm over Jamez Olawale and I think the money that you have allocated to him, I don't think that it puts you in a bad spot. So um First of all, hell yeah, e- even if they come in relatively r- relatively even, like Shea Wu is going to save you a million and a half dollars. So if it gets bad enough, you get younger at the fullback position and you save a little bit of money. So I definitely think Shea Wu has an opportunity. Plus, I think he's a better runner than, than Jamez, right? If we're thinking about fullbacks, think about what uh, Minnesota did with Ham last year or what uh, the 49ers do with uh, do with Juszczyk. He's a guy that can get some carries. He can catch the ball and he blocks for you. You know what I'm saying? Um, and I want to say Shea Wu is bigger than Jamez. Shea Wu like 235 pounds. Like he's a big muscle of a dude. So um, I think it's going to be interesting, man. I definitely think he has a chance to make the team today. Um, and in terms of Rico. What gives me optimism about Rico, possibly, first of all, he has to compete with Darius Anderson. And I like Darius Anderson. I just didn't want to do the film session on him because I think I've done enough coverage on Darius Anderson. You know, you can go look at my um, senior bowl coverage. I've done some some coverage on Darius Anderson. I was just kind of tired of watching him. You know what I'm saying? But I was very excited to watch Shea Wu and Rico. Rico in particular, because I do think Rico has a chance to be a part of this offense. Let me explain to you why. And to be fair, he may not be. He may not be a part of this offense. But what gives me optimism is if you look at how Mike McCarthy used to run his running backs, it'll be his main running back, Cheeseburger Lacey. It'll be the backup guy, and it'll be his pass-catching running back. You know what I'm saying? His backup guy would be like Starks. Then his pass-catching receiving running back would be Ty Montgomery. So i kind of been saying this on on the live streams a lot, that if – Ezekiel Elliott is your Eddie Lacy, which is an upgrade, by the way. If Ezekiel Elliott is your Lacy and Tony Pollard is your Ty Montgomery, then you have more room for another running back, right? So that's going to be Darius Anderson, um, Jordan Chun, and I think Rico Dowdle, right? Now, I think Rico is better than Darius, and I could be wrong here. Who knows? You know, Rico has been injured before. Rico could get hurt again, and Darius could take the shot, or he could take the spot. So that could happen. But, you know, just on me evaluating, if it was up to me, I would rather have Rico than Darius. If I could have both, cool, and, I, you know, like, you know, push Chun off the bridge or something, then, then you know, like, that'll be fine. Um, I just don't think we, we keep four running backs and a fullback, but that's neither here nor there. But I think there's room for that change of pace running back guy to where Tony Pollard is the pass catcher, not the change of pace guy anymore. But there's just room. There's carries for another dude. And, yes, you're taking carries away from Zeke, sure. But 
hey, Cowboy fans, we seem to understand that Zeke seems to look better when he has less carries. You know, that, you know, Zeke seems to be better when he's more when he's more fresh. And Zeke likes to look to the sideline and tap on his helmet because he's tired of something. So cool. If, if Zeke is at his best when he's, you know, when he's fresh, then we got a stable of running backs that can keep Zeke fresh. You know, it just kind of is what it is. So a three running back system, Mike McCarthy has absolute has absolutely done that before. He may not put them all out there at one time, uh, but he'll use them, you know. And if it's a situation where Zeke Zeke gets like twenty, like like let's say like nineteen twenty carries and two catches, and Tony Pollard gets like five carries and seven catches, or it's not like five, four, like four catches, five catches, right? And he does like you know like some uh, you know punt return kick return stuff, and then Rico Dowdle just comes in and get his humble little five carries or his little series or just whatever you know what I mean. If that's how we're gonna run our running backs, cool, I'm fine with that. Then we just have room for another running back as long as there's running backs to be used. Then I'm trying to use them. You know what I'm saying? So I think it's gonna be interesting, man. Training camp is gonna answer a lot of questions. I know I said I don't know a bunch, but to be fair, I don't know. I don't have any clue um, what you know what the new offense will look like. But when training camp come around, I will have so many answers. And of course, y'all stay tuned to the show. We're gonna be breaking all that down. So hey, I ain't wanna hold y'all too long. I'm lying. I don't know how long I've been holding y'all so far, but Hey, we, we got to do what we got to do. Um, expect another soliloquy video. Apparently, those have been doing well, and uh, we'll probably get into some D-line film next time. So, y'all hold it down for the Doski, Wilson, the Peaky Whiskey, man. Salute.